This is the week of the Passion. Probably the most crucial time period in all of history. We know how the week began with the triumphal entry. We know what Jesus did during the day. For the most part, he was in the temple. He was um, teaching. Uh, most often he was dealing with the efforts, continuing efforts to entrap and discredit him. The uh, temple authorities already decided that, that Jesus um, needed to be eliminated. They had plotted his death, and we will come to find out that they found someone within the disciple band who would uh, betray him. They didn't know what he was doing in the evenings. Uh, we we're told that uh, customarily he would go to over the Mount of Olives and spend time in, in uh, solitude and prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. We know he did that uh, on Thursday evening after he had had a Passover meal with his disciples. And we know that uh, while he was there, um, he experienced the agony of um, of confronting the decision to uh, yield to his father's will and to um, submit himself to the agony that was awaiting him. What happened after that is the um, arresting group came. Some say they were temple police. Others say that there were some Roman soldiers involved. Um, it's not clear, but obviously it was an armed band. Um, they had Judas Iscariot with them, and he had agreed to give them a signal. The garden would not have been well lit, and even with torches, it could have been difficult to identify. Um, we know that at first there was a, uh, a show of resistance uh, with Peter, but Jesus stopped that and actually healed the man who Peter had wounded. And then the disciples fled into the night. Jesus is uh, arrested. And as he's being taken uh, to the house of Caiaphas, uh, he's beaten, he is spit on, he is scorned, and he remains silent. He he makes no effort to retaliate. He doesn't respond to their snide remarks or their insults. What follows is a mockery, really, of um the arrangement of the plot to to get rid of Jesus, bringing him before uh, the assembly of the Sanhedrin. Uh, not all of the members of the Sanhedrin were present. We know that uh, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, both members of the Sanhedrin, were not involved or certainly were not allowed to raise their voices. Um, they had brought in some false witnesses to accuse Jesus. So they couldn't even get their story straight. And ultimately, it's the word of Jesus himself um, that they latch on to as they accuse him of blasphemy. Now, they, they couldn't execute Jesus, and they had to convince um, the Romans to do so. And so then we have the parade to Pilate, then to Herod, then back to Pilate. Uh, Pilate wanted nothing to do with this. He had gotten into trouble with the Jews before. And ultimately, the Jewish leaders uh, threatened Pilate that they would report his um, lack of action in this charge of subversion. Uh, they would report him back to Rome. And uh, Palestine was not the favorite posting uh, for governors or Roman officials. And there was not really a place to go that was below that posting. So Pilate knew that he could lose his job, he could lose his life if he made uh, the emperor uh, angry with him. So ultimately, as you as we know, he he gives in. Um, first, he passes Jesus off to Herod. Herod was the tetrarch of Galilee, so he had authority. And when Pilate found out that Jesus was from Galilee, he said, "I'll, I'll just let Herod decide." And Herod. Herod just wanted a magic show and he got disgusted because Jesus wasn't going to play along. So um, he sent him back to Pilate. The sad truth of this is that um, the, the ugly side of, of human nature is on full display. The mob um, was a very different crowd than the one that had hailed Jesus on the triumphal entry. Uh, as we have seen too many times, um, 
people are paid to riot. People are uh, forced to uh, push a particular ideology. And the folks who were screaming for uh, Jesus' death um, had been stirred up by those who had the most gain from his execution. Jesus allowed this to happen. Let's don't make any mistake about it. Um, from the moment that he surrendered to the will of his father in the garden, um, Jesus was all in on this, this mission, and it was a horrible mission. It's hard to imagine how difficult it must have been uh, to endure the humiliation, the torture, the abuse. Um, you see the picture over my shoulder that hangs in the pastor's office. It's a picture of Jesus, and in, you look at it closely, you also see him hanging on the cross. There's no way for us to understand uh, or to relate to the amount of suffering he endured. We know that crucifixion is one of the, the most brutal um, forms of killing another human that uh, we've come up with, and we humans are pretty creative in this regard. We found some awful ways to terminate life. But crucifixion must be one of the absolute worst. Without going into to detail about how it's done, um, crucifixion was uh, a tool of state terror. The Romans used it to punish anybody they saw as a threat. And uh, the roadways, not just in Palestine, but in other parts of the empire, could be lined with crosses of thieves, of uh, revolutionaries, um, on and on. We know that there were three crosses uh, on the hill, the skull, Calvary. Uh, we know that the two other uh, condemned prisoners were guilty. But uh, even one of those guys knew that Jesus didn't deserve what was happening to him. Uh, it was a, a terrible scene. But it was a scene that Jesus volunteered for. His death on the cross was not because of the wounds inflicted upon him, upon the exposure. There were people who could last for days on a cross because ultimately they would die from exposure or blood loss. Um, but Jesus was only on the cross for a few hours. So why did he die? Well, I think the soldiers who knew their, knew their duty and were pretty skilled at understanding how to kill a person, but also how to stretch out the suffering so that the person would have to endure it for a long time. And they were surprised that Jesus died so quickly. And the, um, the spear in his side was to, to uh, make sure he was dead. Uh, normally, if the, if the person lang lingered for any length of time, uh, the soldiers would take their spear shaft and break the legs of the condemned person hanging on the cross, and that would hasten death. They didn't do that to Jesus because they determined that he had already died. So why did it happen that way? Well, I don't think it was the wounds or the exposure. I think he died of a broken heart. I think he died because of the weight of sin. I think he died as a way to uh, absorb the penalty that you and I deserve. So as we move through this week of passion, as we think about the significance of what happened, we know the end of the story. We know that there's victory coming, but there's suffering, unbelievable suffering. So as we spend these days uh, reading the scripture and revisiting old stories, I hope that we'll focus particularly on how much God loves us and what his son was willing to do. I happen to believe that if there was only one of us who needed him to take the penalty of sin, he would have done it. But he did it for everyone. And yes, he died for Pilate and Herod and Caiaphas and all the rest of them. He died for every person who lived, who has lived, who will live. He died for you and he died for me. So as we approach the cross at the end of this week, as we think about the significance of his sacrifice, I hope we'll take it personally. That we'll realize he did it for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that you and I might have a chance to have eternal life. Bless you.